Welcome everyone to a show today here with my friend Marcus Clements. Welcome, Marcus. Good morning, Ron. Yeah, thanks for being with us today. We are at a time of year where we have our Lighthouse Telethon, and we appreciate all y'all do throughout the community. Now, Clements and Keene uh, support so many different facets of our community. You always have from schools to, to the telethon. Yeah. So we're trying to get information out to everyone. We really want to, to benefit you on how to prepare yourself for the future. We all need to be prepared for the future. And, and many of us think, okay, I need to save, I need to invest, I need to prepare in, in one way or another. But how many people really prepare for long-term care or for uh, a, a dementia? If, it's, if, it's, uh, if it sets in on someone, this is something that has to be uh, addressed very quickly. And better to, to address that for your family ahead of time than to wait to the last minute or to get to the point where possibly one may not be thinking clearly and then come to the point where you know your family loses yeah. out in some way you you could lose your your entire savings you know because yeah. uh, uh, if you have assets and you go into long-term care from what I understand um, you are required to pay but if you have time to uh, either have the insurance or do yeah. something with the assets and you're much better off so yeah. we have um, Marcus Clements here because of his wealth, the knowledge, and the insurance, long-term care insurance business. How many years have you been in the insurance business? I've been in the insurance business 49 years, Ron. Mm -hmm. Long-term care insurance is relatively new. About 25 years ago, insurance companies began the, to issue long-term care insurance. But we've, uh, we've been in the long-term care, life, and health insurance business uh, about 49 years in this area. Mm -hmm. And so it's changed a lot. It, it changes weekly, it, it's, uh, it seems to me, and uh, that's one reason a few years ago we decided to focus uh, on life and health insurance, mm -hmm. and uh, so we've done that mainly because of a change in the marketplace out there. We decided to let others do the property and casualty insurance, sure. and we do health and life insurance. Mm -hmm. and, and that's such a, a huge part of people's lives and such an undertaking I'm sure it's good to specify to, to get into that specific market and be able to help people. Yes, we found that you uh, you have to be specialist uh, and pick your area and try to to do your best to be to ready to meet the the market demands and the needs of the community. Yeah. So let's first talk about life insurance and how that's changed and how that would uh, apply to someone who may be going into a part of their life where. Uh, they're not sure and they have maybe a family history or even yeah. one person in their family who has some kind of uh, dementia or possibly yeah. Alzheimer's. Uh, life insurance should be purchased uh, and the need of life insurance should be looked at when someone is young. However, finances sometimes prohibit purchasing uh, life insurance. Mm. Uh, but as someone approaches the, uh, the senior years, uh, they need some life insurance, at least a basic amount, that will be either be paid up or will have a substantial asset, cash mm -hmm. value. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the life insurance being issued today is term insurance, and there's a good reason for that. It fills a temporary need, mm -hmm. uh, and it's less expensive than, than a permanent form of insurance. Mm -hmm. But to plan for the senior years, you need some uh, life insurance that's going to survive your your working years. Okay, um, in, in speaking specifically about how to financially afford care, um, I guess whole life or universal life, if I'm saying yes, it properly, yes, yes. would be a benefit in that you could draw from what you had saved in order to help uh, care for yourself later, your that, family would right. be able that's to. That's right, that's right. Uh, we call it old-fashioned whole life. Yeah. It's still the mainstay for cash value life insurance. Mm -hmm. uh, universal life is more popular maybe now, but uh, one of those forms of, uh, of life insurance is, is where the cash value uh, accumulates. And in recent years, uh, as it relates to long-term care, uh, there is life insurance being sold now where you can actually draw down the cash value before your death to take care of long-term care expenses. Uh, it, that's becoming more popular. You, you can solve sometimes two problems with one, one contract. About how many uh, percentage-wise would you say throughout the nation, about how many people or what percentage would have life insurance? 
if you include group life insurance that's usually sponsored by an employer, probably 70 percent uh, of adult uh, adults in this country have some form of life insurance. Mm -hmm. And then if we look at uh, the opportunities that would be there through whole or through the investment, yes. um, through something that continues to grow yeah. for you, you, you actually yeah. uh, gain money, you gain a percentage yes. of yes. interest, do yeah. you not? Yes, you do, You, you uh, depending on the contract and the investment uh, mm -hmm. available through the life insurance, you have the potential to have substantial cash value mm -hmm. uh, down the road. We mentioned term insurance uh, a little bit ago, uh, and it, it feels a need, but unfortunately, 99% of all term insurance is never paid out, out as a death claim. 99% uh, of the people survive their term, term insurance, and it's by design to fill a temporary need mm -hmm. while kids are growing up or to cover sure. a loan. Sure. So the, the only way to have some cash value, paid up values, is through some permanent form of insurance which guarantees the death benefit too until age 100 usually. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay, so there's an option for you ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we're, we're speaking today about insurance, about long-term care uh, insurance and we want to be able to educate you a little bit in uh, the month of July because of our Lighthouse Telethon. Mm -hmm. The Lighthouse located on Bellevue Avenue. Marcus, you're very familiar yes, with it. Yes, my neighbor. All, yeah, you all have given uh, to it over the years through the telethon and we encourage you to do your part again uh, we've had many different um, fundraising opportunities in the past to try and help uh, the daycare centers privately funded uh, state approved uh, it's for anyone with uh, anything from down syndrome at a young age or following on up to someone with dementias uh, someone with uh, alzheimer's they can go and and give the caregiver an opportunity to have a break during the course of yes. the day and know that they are well cared for. It's a wonderful place and we invite you to, to get yeah. in touch with them. The address, phone number, we'll have up on the screen periodically. But the uh, telethon, Marcus, always gives us an opportunity to um, go out to businesses yeah. such as yourself, as you yeah. all are sponsoring, yeah. and uh, actually you know, run the ads and make the donation to the Lighthouse yeah. in order to have them operate yeah. throughout the course yeah. of the year. It's expensive to take care of people. Yes. And that's why it's important to have long-term care insurance. About how many people, percentage-wise, would have long-term care insurance? Well, as I said a moment ago, it's a relatively new product, mm -hmm. uh, about 25, 30 years old. Mm -hmm. Less than 10% of uh, those over age 60 uh, have long-term care insurance. Mm -hmm. However, one out of two people over age 60 will spend some time in a nursing home before their death. It's a, it's a real problem that's not, at the moment, is not properly insured. Mm -hmm. and, and so you stand to uh, have a lot less options in life. Uh, you, you're going to lose probably more property or uh, yeah, yeah. won't have the options yeah. as far as where you go yeah. or where you yeah. put a loved one. Yeah. Why wouldn't you make the choice up front, ladies and gentlemen, at least look into uh, the long-term uh, care insurance. Yes. Now, what does long-term care insurance mean and what does it provide? Okay, it's, it's commonly called nursing home policies. However, long-term care insurance covers a lot more. Uh, normally, long-term care insurance covers home health care, mm. any expense at home that's not covered by other insurance or Medicare. Mm. It covers assisted living centers. Uh, we have several facilities locally. Long-term care insurance will pay the fee for, for assisted living centers if the, if the patient qualifies, mm -hmm. and of course for nursing home. So uh, home health care, assisted living, nursing home uh, expenses are all paid uh, if you have long-term care insurance. Okay, so if, if one is looking at that, uh, should they look at it in their 30s? Is it like other insurance? Yes, they should look at it while they're young. However, the expenses of of growing a family, sure. it sometimes prevents uh, someone from looking. Uh, I would say, look at the, the, there's a great premium change after age 50, 55. You can actually purchase long-term care insurance through age 75. Mm. However, the premium gets very restrictive as you advance in years. So uh, I advise our clients, no later than 50 years old, start looking at long-term care Hopefully, income-wise and expense-wise, uh, you're in a better financial position. Uh, the sooner the better, 
but many times it's not practical at young ages to, to purchase it. Okay. All right. And so they could get in touch with you and, and get more yes. information on yes. that, I'm sure, Mark. We've been in the health care, the long-term health care insurance business ever, ever since they began to, to sell it. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure there's others in the community that's licensed. You just want to look at a, find you a licensed rep that's familiar with, with long-term care insurance mm -hmm. uh, and, and purchase your coverage. Mm -hmm. Now, Marcus, do you see a lot of people, uh, as most of us do, uh, as we get older, with some type of dementia affected by yes, Alzheimer's? Yes, uh, it has become uh, the major health-related problem as far as the seniors uh, is concerned. Mm. And uh, the greatest danger of a long-term stay in a nursing home is dementia. It's, it's so prevalent. And uh, Alzheimer's was diagnosed, uh, you know, several years ago now. And uh, every family, virtually every family in this community, in any community, has been affected by, by Alzheimer's or some form of dementia. And so, better to face that up front if you have a history of it or if, you, uh, if you're going to, numbers are yeah. percentage-wise, yeah. spend time yeah. in long-term care. Um, this is an ideal opportunity maybe to look into it if yes, you haven't, yes. ladies and gentlemen. Think about some way to support the uh, Lighthouse Adult Daycare. Uh, they will take volunteers there. Yeah. Uh, they encourage, again, as we mentioned to you before, any youth group or anyone to come in, uh, play music. That's very good, any, kind, any types of uh, crafts. But uh, if you have a youth group or something and maybe want to come in and sing, it would uh, really light sure. up their world yes. on, on that. And, yes. Even though you think they don't know much, uh, many times you see them recognize uh, things. And, yep. But it's a, a part of our life now yes. that we have to deal yes. with. I'm sure we've all seen, Ron, uh, even recently, uh, uh, senior adults with some form of dementia. Uh, you know, a child goes in, and they don't respond. They begin to sing an old song and uh, bring a pet in, yeah. and they, they respond to what's hidden in their in their memory hmm. and uh, those that go in and try to uh, be assistance to these patients are really doing a great service to that family and to this community. Yeah. Thank you Marcus for your support throughout the community but especially right now on the Lighthouse Telethon. <music>